Welcome. Welcome to our worship service today. We are at Evangelical United Church of Christ in Marysville, Kansas, and we are delighted that you could join us. Our announcements this morning are good ones. Um, as Governor Kelly is lifting the stay at home orders, we are planning a outdoor service on May 31st. Until then, we will do videos just to be safe. But on May 31st, we are planning on having a gazebo service right outside our church. Regular time, 10 o'clock, bring your chairs, and it will be so good to worship together in person again, won't it? To sing again, to pray again, to offer our gifts again, to smile again at one another. So make plans for that. Until then, bear with us as we come to you via Facebook, YouTube, and Blue Valley Channel 3 Sundays, Noon, Wednesdays, 10.30 a.m. Thank you. Please focus your minds, your hearts, and your spirits. All merciful, tender God, you have given birth to our world, conceiving and bearing all that lives and breathes. We come to you as your daughters and sons, aware of our aggression and anger, our drive to dominate and manipulate others. We ask you to forgive us and by the gentle touch of your spirit, help us to find a renewed sense of compassion that we may truly live as your people in service to all. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Acts, and I'm in the second chapter, beginning with verse 42. They joined with the other believers and devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, sharing in the Lord's Supper and in prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together constantly and shared everything they had. They sold their possessions and shared the proceeds with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their group those who were being saved. Amen. On April 12th, we celebrated Easter in our homes, granted, but we celebrated Easter. And it always fascinates me that the day after Easter, 
this year, April 13th, I am able to go in to Walmart, to whatever store sells Easter goods, and buy half price what I would have paid full price two days before. Interesting. For the world, Easter lasts one day. For the church, Easter lasts six weeks. The season of Easter includes the day that Jesus was resurrected until the day of Pentecost. So right now we are in the middle and we are talking about what happened in those days between Jesus dying and raising and the Holy Spirit being poured on all the people of the world. This morning, my scripture talks about the first believers, the first what we call later Christians, those who were trying to live out their faith in Jesus. And this is one of my favorite passages because it tells us that those first followers of Jesus bore witness to their faith by devoting themselves to the teachings of the apostles, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. And I guarantee you, if we pulled out a newsletter or a bulletin of this congregation, we would see many, if not all, of those things happening here. 2,000 years later, our Bible studies, our Sunday schools, kids club, coffee hour, first Fridays, potluck dinners, they all create what those first Christians experienced, an environment of togetherness. until recently, until COVID-19. And then gathering together became something completely different, didn't it? Instead of sharing a pew or a table downstairs, we've learned to share our love through the airwaves. To break bread, in homes recently has meant bringing our own bread and juice to our own tables where we share on screen our Eucharist together. And oddly and wonderfully, because of the pandemic, the world is experiencing communion as never before, perhaps not with juice and bread or wine and wafers, but through the generosity of people that we could have never imagined by delivering groceries and meals to neighbors, contributing to the local food bank, and preparing and distributing food to children who are not able to partake of school lunches. It's different, but in some ways, I believe the act of communion has spread to every neighborhood, every group of people, and the world is seeing a renewal of what it means to be a God person. It's simple. I wanted to share something with you. Speaking of simplicity maybe or the good things that have happened since the pandemic, we have to look for the good things. Did you know the earth is healing? The skies are clearer now than they have been for decades. 
The earth itself is quiet because there is not the busy traffic, the constant going of humankind. Even the ozone, which we have done so much damage to, is knitting together and becoming new again. So I want you, in the midst of all the inconvenience that the pandemic has brought us, I want you to look around. I want you to see in God's world how God works. The flowers are just as beautiful. I see the wheat is growing. I see vegetable gardens begin to lift and celebrate in the wonder of God's nature. And this morning, as we have communion, I want you to realize that this isn't the beginning of um, God's rule upon the earth in all his goodness. It's always been there and always will be. It's this that we've made ourselves too busy to notice. So I want you to go get your bread, go get your wine or juice or milk. And I want people of all ages, kids, go get something you like. Adults, go find a drink and just a, a bit to eat. And let us from our separate homes commune with God and with one another, praising God for God's goodness, for his everlasting love, and for his forgiveness to us in all our frailty. On the night before Jesus died, not just died, was crucified, the most horrible death, our beloved Savior met with his disciples, with his friends, to share one last meal until he would be taken up into heaven. And as he looked around that room, I look around this room and I can see where many of you sit each Sunday. And I invite you from youngest to oldest to join in the Lord's Supper. Are we worthy? God thinks so. Jesus invited us. So God, this morning, I just thank you that you have deemed us worthy to sit at the table with you, to share a meal with you. And as we do, Lord, we think back to that night so many years ago when you, in all your love, ate with those you cherished. And we also thank God at this time today of all the people around the world who are remembering you, who are loving you, who are lifting you up and praising you because of your eternal grace. Amen. So it was the night before he died. And Jesus sat with those, his disciples, those he had spent the last three years with. And he took the bread and he lifted it to heaven and he gave thanks to God. He broke it and sent it around the table. And he said to those people gathered, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. 
And so all of you, at this moment, would you please take your food bit and eat, remembering Jesus. And after the meal was over, Jesus took the final cup of wine. He lifted it to heaven and gave thanks to his Father. And then he passed that cup around. And he said, take, drink. This is my blood of the new covenant given for you. And so today, God, we remember Jesus 2,000 years ago sharing that cup of wine with his friends and his followers. And we today remember those in our community and around the world. And we thank you so very much for that blood that was given on our behalf. So would you share with me in the cup? Thank you, God. we come together as people who struggle, people who rejoice, people who mourn, just people, knowing that we can come to our God and our God hears us and he cares for us. And the Bible tells us he acts on our behalf. So this morning, we quiet all that is within us. And we remember those who are suffering in New York, on the West Coast, all of those who are still experiencing many deaths a day, many new cases of COVID-19. We remember. And at the same time, we praise God that measures are being made to beat this thing and that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. 
and we come with our personal cares and joys and petitions. Think about the people in this congregation. Remember who you sat very recently by. Remember those across the aisle, those in front of you and in back of you, and realize that they are still going through whatever they were going through, perhaps, before we had to separate. Let's remember one another. Would you please bow your heads and pray with me? Dear Lord, it's hard to be alone and to pray through the airwaves. We want to be together, to listen to one another's life experiences. But for this short while, we sit in our homes and we imagine those people that surround us normally on a Sunday morning. We remember that people are mourning the death of family members, that people are rejoicing in the upcoming nuptials of a child or grandchild. We remember those who are ill and those who have experienced healing. God, we just come as people and we thank you so much that you hear us as we pray. And now, dear God, Please hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus, your precious son, taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I can only imagine how my life would be without knowing you. Having you and me, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, I can only imagine where my soul would be for eternity. Without the Trinity, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, surrounded by your glory. What will my heart be? Yeah, who will I dance for you, Jesus? Will I be still? Who will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Who will I sing? Hallelujah. Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. When it's said and done, standing next to you, and everlasting sun, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart be, yeah, will I dance for you, Jesus, or will I be still, or will I stand in your presence, to my knees would I fall, would I sing hallelujah? Would I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. 
Yeah, yeah, I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart be? Hell, will I dance for you, Jesus? Or will I be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. When it's said and done, standing next to you, an everlasting sun, I can only imagine. Yeah, I can only imagine. Before we begin our offering to God, I just want to thank everyone in our congregation who have been so loyal and faithful to send their checks and money into the church during this time of separation. It's because of you that we've been able to continue this ministry without interruption, thank you. So now at this time, we come together again. We bring our tithes, our offerings, and our gifts, giving them to God without hesitation, without second thought, because we know we are part of a bigger mission. And that is to bring the love of God, not only to this community, but around the world. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, we come together in our separate homes, but as one people. We come together as men and women, boys and girls who love you. And we know that your mission for us is to help you so that the world might know that God is love. Bless this money, God, in each and every home. Use it. Multiply it. Let it do what you would have it to do. And we give you all the glory. Amen. Alleluia. 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 Enjoy this beautiful spring weather. Look at the flowers. Enjoy the birds and the animals. If you can, get out into the country and see the new calves and the new colts and all that is born this spring season. We love you. Go with God and go in peace. Amen.